Birth as a Rite of Passage, and the Journey of Fetal Development. Introduction. Childbirth is more than a biological process. It is a profound rite of passage, marking the transition of a fetus into a newborn with an independent existence. This journey begins with the union of egg and sperm, progresses through intricate stages of development, and culminates in the transformative experience of birth. This report explores fetal development, the mechanics of birth, and the genetic determinants of sex, framed as an initiation into life. Fertilization and genetic determination, conception, union of gametes, fertilization occurs when a sperm cell from the male merges with an egg cell from the female, typically in the fallopian tube. Formation of zygote, this union creates a zygote, a single cell containing genetic material from both parents, which will develop into the fetus. Genetic determinants of sex, sex chromosomes, the sex of the fetus is determined at fertilization by the combination of sex chromosomes. A sperm carries either an X or a Y chromosome, while the egg always carries an X chromosome. Heterosexual development XX or XY. If the sperm carries an X chromosome, the result is an XX combination female. If the sperm carries a Y chromosome, the result is an XY combination male. Hermaphroditism, rarely, variations in sex chromosomes or genetic mutations can lead to intersex conditions, where an individual may have both male and female reproductive anatomy or ambiguous genitalia. XX, XY mosaicism, also known as chimerism, is a rare genetic condition where an individual has both XX and XY cell lines. This unique genetic composition can lead to a wide spectrum of phenotypic outcomes, ranging from ambiguous genitalia to the presence of both male and female reproductive organs. The condition challenges traditional binary understandings of sex and provides insight into the complexity of human sexual development. Individuals with XX, XY mosaicism possess cells with two different genetic makeups, XX cells, typically female cell line with two X chromosomes. XI cells, typically male cell line with one X and one Y chromosome. This genetic mosaicism can occur due to several mechanisms, such as fusion of two zygotes, the fusion of two embryos, one XX and one XY early in development. Postzygotic mutation, a mutation occurring after fertilization leading to a divergence in cell lines. Exchange of cells between twins. During early embryonic development, cells can be exchanged between fraternal twins, resulting in mosaicism in one or both twins. Phenotype. The phenotypic presentation of individuals with XX, XY mosaicism is highly variable and can range from typical male or female appearances to ambiguous genitalia. Key features include ambiguous genitalia, external genitalia that do not fit typical definitions of male or female. This can include a mixture of male and female structures, mixed reproductive organs, the presence of both ovarian and testicular tissues. This can occur in different configurations, ovotestis, a single gonad containing both ovarian and testicular tissue. Separate gonads, one ovary and one testis, located either bilaterally or unilaterally. Variable secondary sexual characteristics, depending on the proportion of XX to XY cells and the functioning of the respective tissues. Individuals may exhibit a mix of secondary sexual characteristics, such as breast development and facial hair. Intersex implications, XX, XY mosaicism often leads to true hermaphroditism, where individuals have both ovarian and testicular tissue. This can manifest in various ways. Ovotestis, an ovotestis is a single gonad, that contains both ovarian follicles and seminiferous tubules. The functioning of these structures can vary, sometimes producing both eggs and sperm. Separate gonads. Some individuals may have one ovary and one testis. 
This arrangement can lead to asymmetric development of secondary sexual characteristics. Hormonal influences. The presence of both types of gonadal tissue can result in mixed hormonal signals, influencing the development of both male and female traits. Fetal development, early development, weeks 1 to 4, after fertilization, the zygote undergoes rapid cell division, forming a blastocyst, which implants in the uterine lining. The embryonic period begins, characterized by the formation of the basic structures of the body. Weeks 5 to 8, major organs and systems start to develop. By the end of the eighth week, the embryo transitions to the fetal stage, measuring about one inch in length. Fetal growth, weeks 9 to 12, the fetus grows rapidly, and the external genitalia start to form allowing for the determination of sex via ultrasound by the end of this period. Weeks 13 to 24, the fetus continues to grow and develop. By around 20 weeks, the fetus is approximately 6 inches long and begins to move in the womb. Weeks 25 to 38, the fetus undergoes significant growth and maturation of the lungs and other vital organs. By full term 3840 weeks, the fetus is ready for birth, typically weighing between 6 to 9 pounds and measuring 18 to 21 inches in length. Orientation and birth, fetal position, initial position, early in pregnancy, the fetus moves freely and can be oriented in various positions within the amniotic sac. Final position cephalic presentation, by around 30 to 36 weeks, most fetuses naturally settle into a head down position known as cephalic presentation, in preparation for birth. This positioning is crucial for a smooth delivery. Stages of birth, stage 1, preparation and dilation, onset of labor. Labor begins with the onset of regular uterine contractions, which cause the cervix to efface and dilate. Dilation. This stage can last several hours to over a day, with the cervix gradually opening from 0 to 10 centimeters. Stage 2. Delivery of the baby. Active pushing. Once the cervix is fully dilated, the mother begins active pushing with each contraction. Birth. The baby's head descends into the birth canal, followed by the rest of the body. This stage typically lasts from a few minutes to a few hours. Stage 3. Delivery of the placenta. After birth. Following the birth of the baby, uterine contractions expel the placenta and remaining fetal membranes. This process usually takes about 5 to 30 minutes. Newborn's initiation into independent life, physiological changes, breathing, upon birth, the newborn begins to breathe air, initiating the transition from fetal to neonatal circulation. Circulatory adjustments. The foramen ovale and other fetal shunts close, rerouting blood flow to the lungs for oxygenation. Symbolic transition, rite of passage, birth marks the newborn's passage from the protected, dependent existence in the womb to an independent life in the external world. This transition is not only a biological event, but also a profound cultural and symbolic initiation. Conclusion, childbirth, viewed as a rite of passage, encompasses the remarkable journey from conception to independent life. The intricate process of fetal development, culminating in the transformative experience of birth, highlights the profound nature of this initiation. Understanding the stages of labor, fetal orientation, and the genetic determinants of sex provides a comprehensive view of this essential human experience.